Normally I start off these videos by telling you how great an ATX machine is, how it's the best thing I've used or something similar. However, this is a machine that I wasn't impressed with straight away. I actually contacted ATX to confirm that there were no issues with the design. The reason why I was not impressed was because when I first set up any machine, I like to really push it through its paces. So in this case, I uh, threw my knee sleeves on and I loaded it up and kept loading it. However, once I got to roughly over 160 kilos, I did notice that the machine started experiencing flexing. If you watch my review on the SQM 700, I mentioned that both the old Powertech and Megatech leveraged squat calf machines did experience flexing. So flexing is not uncommon in a machine like a leveraged squat. Squats are an exercise that you can lift a fair amount of weight. Secondly, the weight suspended at height. The ATX SQM 700 was redesigned to eliminate that flex. So I guess I was just sort of hoping that the new SQM 600 design also eliminated it too. In hindsight, my concerns were exaggerated by the fact that we have this machine on a mezzanine floor. So when the machine was loaded up, the plywood sh sheets flex, which amplifies any flex in the machine when you're using it. Now, it has been nearly two years since I set up this machine and raised my concerns with ATX. The machine still has stayed in our gym. After the initial trial, if you had said to me that it would still be here after all this time, I would have said not a chance. Normally I wouldn't import a machine that I didn't like, let alone uh, let it take up precious space in our showroom as we often run out of space for other machines. There's no other way to put it, I guess, that the machine has sort of grown on me. And let me explain why. Firstly, the Viking press. The machine gets used just as much for Viking press as it does for leg exercises. Since getting both of the new ATX leverage squat machines, the Viking press has probably become the, well, one of the favorite shoulder exercises for everyone here. It's just so easy to set up and feels great. No messing around with a barbell, straight in. Due to shoulder issues, I rarely shoulder pressed using any style, dumbbell, barbell, Smith machine. But now I do them all the time. The leverage format makes it easier to focus on just working the delts. Um, I could do a, a leverage shoulder press on the multi press, which is just over there, but I find doing them standing just makes it a bit easier to get into the correct position. Secondly, it's a great standing calf raise. Now I would never recommend buying this machine because you can do standing calf raises. You can do them so many other ways using much cheaper equipment or for free using a step and your own body weight. However, I've just grown used to having this machine here and it has just made it easier, especially when we've got multiple people training, it just opens up another options. Third would be glutes. Now I'm not a massive, I'm not massive into booty training. The Nordic curl bench and backward sled work are now regulars in my workouts but I don't go much further than that. However, at the end of my leg workouts, I started using this machine for some light squats. What I found was that after doing um, the Nordic curls, some deep light squats really gave the glutes a, a, a real workout and felt them there without any discomfort. So I started adding those. And finally, we have plenty of machines that we can do a leverage row on. Now this one would not be my first choice, but you can do a decent row. Personally, I just use it to finish my back workout with light weight and plenty of reps. Plus another exercise that I've seen people do on social media is you can actually put a bench on there and do a leverage chest press as well. And finally, quality. Despite my concerns, the machine has not come close to failing in any way. Despite it being a lighter duty machine, it is still great quality. And to put it into perspective, it utilizes many of the same parts and designs that are featured on the 
squat station of the MSX 700 multi-station. Now the MSX 700 multi-station is rated for commercial usage, while the SQM 600 is rated for home use. The shoulder pads now are also one piece, which is also a significant upgrade on the previous model. And the lever arm has um, also had a makeover as well. The bracing and the bearings are extremely heavy duty. And here is a PT studio in Italy using one in their gym. It still has the same ATX quality, but they've just built it for the intended use. The SQM 700 is the machine that has been over-engineered. Over That's the one to get if you wanna do heavy weights. Now, who would I recommend this machine for? The ATX SQM 600 is an example of how ATX have introduced different grades for different users. For example, they have the 500, 600, 700, and 800 series power racks. So this machine is for people that the SQM 700 is overkill for. Not everyone is gonna squat over 160 kilos, so why pay for a machine that does? I guess that is where I was conflicted. Gym equipment is way more affordable than, say, cars. Um, with three kids, we decided to get a Kia Sorento. I would have much rather got a, something like a Toyota Land Cruiser, but they are much more expensive. I'd rather my kids trash a Sorento versus a Land Cruiser. However, the, the, the price difference between the um, 600 and 700 SQMs is nowhere than the difference between the car example. So I guess my natural inclination is to always opt for the better one. But if you're always going to be a light user, then you can save some money. These days, the percentage of female customers is growing constantly, which is great. Women are now setting up home gyms and trying to get their fellas into training. Before, it was always a battle for the blokes trying to get their gyms approved by the Minister of uh, War and Finance. So it's great to see that women now are getting right into it. Now, I'm not saying that all women are light squatters, but what I will say is that women are often smarter trainers than men, and they won't sacrifice form to lift more weight. Plus, give the glute guru a follow and you'll see that a leverage squat machine can also be used for exercises more than squats. To wrap it up, another common feature I mention in these videos is inflation. The price of everything, including gym, gym equipment, has increased and still keeps increasing. We used to sell the old SQM650 for $1,600. So an ATX leverage squat of $1,300 in 2024 is a great deal for the right person. We bitch and moan about prices in Australia, but trust me, relative to the average income, gym equipment is more expensive in many parts of Europe. So it is clever by ATX to offer differing grades to their European customers. You can choose the model that best suits your needs. Uh, if you're a heavy lifter, get the SQM 700. If not, save some money and just get the SQM 600. You're not buying cheap junk that's not been designed properly, that, that won't feel good. It still has the same ATX quality, many shared parts, and you'll get years of use uh, just like I have out of this one so far.